Hi, this is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net, and today I'm going to be covering a game from the 2011 U.S. Chess Championship between Sam Shankland and Alexander Onischuk. And this is not your everyday game because it was a playoff to progress from the first stage, the, the group stage, to the semifinals in the U.S. Championship Invitational Closed Tournament. So... Sam Shankland, uh, the first game was drawn, so I believe this, this game was played at 25 minutes with a five-second increment. And I think after this game, it goes down to, uh, unless the rules have changed, I, I think it goes to an Armageddon sudden death playoff. And um, so th this game, um, you know, both players, the first game was drawn, so the winner of this game would automatically advance, and if not, it's going to go to a, a blitz playoff game. And so Onus Chuck plays a topical variation in the Nimzo Indian defense. And so F3, and I guess this is called the Samish variation. I'm not 100% on this, but um, with F3, White is very simply trying to put a lot of pawns in the center, uh, a central pawn mass, and hopefully advance and create some attacking possibilities. So D5 is seems to be the, the standard treatment by Black in this opening, preventing E4. And now a3, and he takes the pawn. And I think Fisher against Ryshevsky actually had a game uh, about 50 years ago. I, I could be I, wrong on that. I'm not 100% if it's uh, Ryshevsky or not, where he played pawn takes. And I, I believe the game, it, it somehow continued where Fisher hung on to this pawn on c4. Similar line. It wasn't this exact line. Anyways, um continuing so now d takes c5 and um black is it, it's a dynamic position i mean white's gonna play e4 and he's gonna have some pawns in the center black is probably gonna play queen a5 maybe queen to c7 put some pressure he's, he's gonna win back the c5 pawn and, and maybe he's gonna win the c3 pawn in the process probably not um so the material balance is essentially equal in light of that and um here e4 so obviously queen takes c3 and bishop d2 is not going to work out too well for black knight takes i believe a similar fate awaits black after queen d2 or, or even bishop d2 is maybe the better move so with that in mind the knight just goes back to f6 i mean that's the best the best place for it to be and so now it looks like white is going to be trying to hold on to the pawns but really, he's just trying to make it a little bit more difficult for Black to win him back. The c5 pawn is, is extremely weak. And, and there's no doubt that Black's going to win that pawn. But, you know, okay, so so what's what's going on in the position? Well, knight fd7, I mean, this looks kind of like a strange move. But I believe it's, you know, knight a6. Maybe White can really try to hold on to the pawns. And... Um, this is just going to be a hassle for black to win them back. And if knight bd7, maybe there's some ideas of queen b4 and trying to set some way up to play. Uh, I, I don't know. I mean, queen b4 seems pretty solid. So a4 now. And black didn't want to mess around with an e5 idea. So now a4 and um, white, white is obviously trying to set up queen b5. And, and with takes so an interesting game both players are moving almost immediately they've used less than a minute each 12 moves deep now and, and the idea is simply white is going to have the two bishops is this weak pawn on c3 enough to compensate and so now he continues trying to hold on to the pawn on c5 now if knight a6 white's just going to take it uh slightly drawish game here now is the opposite color bishops but whites, I mean, the advantage is definitely with white. I mean, um, maybe black can try bishop b7 and f5 to break up the center. But, uh, I mean, white's up a pawn. So opposite colored bishops are not. White White is still up a pawn here. So going back, and b6. So now, yeah, I mean, black is sacrificing a pawn for counterplay. This is definitely a book line. But... Um, you know, white's so weak on c3, and it's going to be so easy for black to generate counterplay that the pawn sacrifice is definitely worth it. So instead, Shanklin plays a5 here. 
and um, a a five seemed interesting. I mean, I don't, you know, I mean, I guess the idea is to be able to play a six to inhibit Black's development. Maybe B takes C five, and the the direct a six. But mm, I I don't know. I'm not super impressed. But it is going to be difficult for Black to develop. I mean, he's got now he's got a weakness at C five. So he can't move the knight on d7. If he plays knight c6, bishop takes. So a a5 is an interesting idea. And so still still home prep all the way. Maybe Onus Chuck a5 is a little surprising, but uh, you know he's used like two or three minutes off his clock, so can't be too crazy, too too much of a surprise here. And after knight e2, so now White is getting getting his pieces developed slowly but surely, and Black as well. So bishop b2, so both sides develop their minor pieces. Now bishop a6, he wants to trade off the bishops and weaken up, soften up the d3 square as well as the c4. Um, c4 advanced by white to inhibit that. So bishop takes, bishop takes, and it's kind of a double-edged move because it softens up the d3 square uh, as well as c4 for white, but it also softens up b5 if white would would so want to uh, put put a knight there or something like that so now we've got i i gotta give the advantage to white as he's getting he's got an initiative on the queen side attacking black's pawns and he's also got a bishop for a knight not to mention there's a possibility the c pawn will become a pass pawn so it's like black's black's pawns are all targets coming out of the opening whereas black is struggling to achieve counterplay in the form, so he's got some counterplay on the default, but these knights aren't really controlling any important squares. And so, now here, a6, and uh, Shanklin, I mean, this guy, I, I don't know, I mean, this was crazy. I don't see a forced continuation where black is, I mean, he was planning this move with rook b1, and yeah, Quincy 4 was fourth, but I mean, Rook B1, he planned this move essentially. I mean, maybe he played it naturally to put pressure on the pawns here, but after A6, he just sacked a piece. So we're exactly equal in material, and if Shanklin loses this game, he's not going to advance to the to the semifinals. And, uh, I mean, it's a gutsy play, so he sacks a piece after three minutes of thought. Onus Chuck took it, obviously, I mean, the only way. And now he sacked a piece for two pawns. And the C3 pawn is not exactly a, a, a gem here. So a very, very gutsy play by Sam Shanklin. I'm impressed. You don't see this a lot in modern day chess. And after E5, now queen takes D3. And maybe this, I think E5 was, was a critical mistake by Onus Chuck. I think he needed to display a little bit more patience here. He, he kind of rushed. To simplify the position and knight specifically a bishop is much better usually if you're up a piece you, all, you know, usually want to be up a bishop in this kind of end game than a knight and because knights are kind of clumsy especially at stopping past pawns so i i think the decisive make here the decisive mistake by owner here i think you should have played knight dc5 I, I think that was simply the only continuation where you know, it's still going to be tough. I mean, the peace sack is uh, it's, it's deeper than it seemed at first. I said, you know, firstly, what's going on here? Well, the peace sack here, I mean, I, I think Black is going to at least draw this game. I think he's going to pick up the pawn on b6. Then he will try to pick up the pawn on c3 and then mobilize his own kingside efforts while trading pieces. So I, I think he had to do that, but he was too anxious and he is too quick to try to trade pieces. And e5, so now he sacks a pawn. So now white has a full three pawns, and black has this knight on b7, which can be very difficult. It's just tough to stop past pawns with knights. So now the end game, I'm going to go through it a little quick. I don't want to take too much time on this video. It's a pretty long game. And um, white just has a magnificent, magnificent center. I mean, it's it's essentially perfect. Now, not only does he have that against the knight, he has a nice pass pawn on b6. And uh, it, it's just very tough. So h4, very important idea. Make Luft, make some space for the king to, to dip out. And the same thing with, with h6 for black, same idea. And now d5. So white has an extremely solid pawn structure. And he's got 
a nuisance. This this pawn is is always going to be annoying black, and it's going to take him a minute to round it up. So now black uh, gets some mate threats. Shanklin. I thought Queen B8 was interesting. He spent a minute and a half here, and I guess he just couldn't figure it out. So I I don't know. So now Queen Queen G3. I mean, maybe the king is. Maybe the idea is the king is a little. It's it's one square farther away from stopping the pawns in the center. So that's the idea with the check. So a nice, a nice uh, subtlety there. And still a lot of work to do for white here. I mean, the position... The, the problem for black is that he can't really win. He, he can only play... I think if black plays perfectly here, maybe he can draw. I think a computer might be able to draw. And now queen e5. Again, I think on his chunk is just trying to trade pieces too much here. And I think at the cost of his position. Now this pawn is doing well to block A, the white pawns. But white can remove it pretty easily. And so now G6, Shanklin, uh, with, with, you know, obviously this is just going to drop a piece. So Rook B2 now. And uh, I don't know. I guess Rook A1, I mean, both the players are in time trouble here. So Rook A1 was, was played pretty quick. They both have about a minute and a half left. So definitely, definitely a lot of time. And I guess Onus Chuck, he, um, I don't know. I mean, this is a very difficult position. He's still down He's still down two or three pawns, depending on how you look at the, the G6 pawn. And now he's got some tactics. So Rook C6, White's just going to win that easily if Black takes. The pawn is just going to be too much. It's going to tie down the knight. And White's essentially up two or three pawns on the king side as well. So now white just goes after black's pawn islands. And this position should be easily won for white all day, no problem. Just just uses the rook working together with the pawns to uh, continue pushing forward. And black's knight is just no match for the pawns. It's just it's too clumsy of a piece. Here Shanklin was down to five seconds of move with the five second increment cre keeping him alive. And Onus Chuck had about, you know, 10 or 20. So the position was, was definitely crazy here. But, I mean, the, the Black Knight just cannot keep up with the pawns. And so Shanklin, um, now he's finally, you know, he, he took a little bit of time. But he was patient and he hit upon the winning method. And after King D6, in light of the fact that Black is either going to get mated or, you know, be down a, a decisive amount of material, he resigned. So an absolutely fantastic upset by Sam Shanklin, GM elect, and uh, over, you know, experienced pro and definitely one of the tournament favorites, Alexander Onischuk. And um, it will be extremely interesting to watch the semifinals. Definitely. I believe Shanklin's playing Robert Hess in Group 2. And in Group 1, we have Gatakamski playing Yuri Shulman. So definitely uh, definitely be fun to watch. So this is Will Stewart from OnlineChessLessons.net. Thanks for tuning in.